Hi, I'm Linda Lowry with Seattle Panoy, and we're here today at the City of Des Moines Courthouse with Judge Veronica Gavon. I just wanted to ask, you know, let the voters know about the history of the City of Des Moines, because I know this is the first time they're actually having an election for judge for City of Des Moines. Is that right? That is correct. Although the Des Moines Municipal Court has been in existence for over 50 years, that is the history of the City of Des Moines, uh, this is the first year that individuals will be able to elect a judge. Part of the reason that changed is because the ju judgeship became a full-time position because of an increase in caseload, and also because uh, as a result of the recession, we were looking at other avenues to receive state funding. And one of the ways that we are able to receive some assistance from the state to pay for our courts is through making the judicial position an elected one. So that guarantees the independence of the judiciary, and in exchange, the state also provides some assistance to the city to pay for their court. Okay, and as far as, um, how long have you been the judge so far? I was appointed to this position originally in 2007. 42 candidates originally applied for the position. They whittled those down to six people. Of those six judges, five of us are on the bench, including myself. I received the position here in Des Moines. Of the people that they interviewed, nobody had less than five years of actual experience as a judge. And so I've been here in Des Moines for six years, but I've been a judge in total for 12. And you started out as a judge in King County, is that correct? I started off as a judge pro tem for the cities of Seattle, King County District Court. I've uh, substituted in Tequila Municipal Court and Kirkland Municipal Court as well. So I've been in several different cities as a substitute judge, and I was an administrative law judge for the state of Washington, uh, where I was appointed in 2002. You have a lot of experience as being a judge here in the state of Washington. Uh, that is correct. I was a prosecuting attorney for several years before I was a judge. And when I decided this was the path uh, that I wanted to take, I went back to judges who I'd practiced before, and I asked them, can you assist me? And many of them, when they go on vacation or they're out sick, they need somebody to fill in. And so that's how I got my start, is filling in for those judges. And that led to my appointment to the Office of Administrative Hearings in 2002 as a full-time judge. And I've continued to fill in for judges, sometimes on Saturdays, sometimes at night court, sometimes Sundays. So I've had several years of experience doing this. So if, because this is more of like a, a career, but also a passion for you as well. Exactly. I believe very much that these lower courts, our lower courts here in the state of Washington, need good judges. I think that our justice system is only as good as the, its worst court. And using that standard, I was determined to make sure that we were not one of, considered a bad court. And I've worked very hard to ensure that we have an excellent reputation, not only here locally as a municipal court, but statewide as well. I work as a leader statewide to ensure that our justice system is improved. And, the, you know, in going back to talking about Washington State, you are a native of Washington. Is that right? Correct. I was born in Bremerton, Washington. I grew up in the Yakima Valley. My father picked fruit for a living. I graduated from Pasco High School. I attended Western Washington University in Bellingham and the University of Washington School of Law. So I pretty much have been in every corner of the state of Washington, uh, either as a child or as an adult. And I love Washington State. It's been an honor to be I'm a second-generation Washingtonian. My mother was also born and raised here in Washington. So, and it's been an honor serving the city of Des Moines. Did you ever think as a child that you would be residing as a judge here in Washington? You know, I, I knew that I wanted to be an attorney. But the judicial path was not something that I considered until I saw other judges. Uh, one of my mentors, Michael Hurtado, uh, was a judge in Seattle Municipal Court, and you have to understand that when I was a child, I didn't see a lot of judges, particularly judges uh, who were Latino or judges of color, uh, on the bench. So at that time, it never even entered my mind as a possibility. But certainly we, we have more judges that uh, are judges of color uh, from different and diverse backgrounds, and one of the goals that I also work on is uh, mentoring students everywhere from grade school through law school to ensure that they understand that the, if this is the path that they want to choose, that we're the, I am there available to help them. And to expand on that so our viewers can know what you've done for the city of Des Moines, um, you mentioned one of your speeches that I attended that you helped raise funds for, for education here in Des Moines. 
Um, well, I volunteer for a lot of educational opportunities. We often have classes visit here. We've done trials for different uh, classes. We've, per, for example, had Goldilocks on trial uh, in May where we had a group of uh, third graders actually conduct the hearing. Uh, we had them act as jurors. We had them act as attorneys. And uh, we had witnesses. So Goldilocks took the stand and explained why she broke into the house of the three bears. We had the three bears testify how that made them feel. And we had their attorneys explain what Goldilocks's motivations were. We do that. We work on other cases with older students, uh, touching upon some more serious subject matter. And so I volunteer a lot educationally in the area. In terms of what we've done for the court, if you look for yourself and you'll see a nice paneling. This is actually a courtroom remodel that was a result of a grant that I received, a federal grant. Um, that grant helped uh, improve safety because underneath this wood paneling is some bulletproof sheathing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that helps us in terms of safety. We also received grants uh, to obtain a transportation van and much of our video court equipment, such as these wonderful microphones that are very newfangled are a result also of grants. So I've been able to compile needed services and objects through the through personally writing and applying for uh, several federal grants and grants at the state level as well. So uh, unfortunately when I took over there was a significant recession that just started and I've had to what I call do MacGyver budgeting and uh, try to come up with alternative ways to provide these court services to the citizens. Um, this has led to some recognition by the state because of my efforts and they actually appointed me to teach uh, municipal court budgeting at the Judicial College. So I've been teaching now for three years. Oh wow, that's very impressive. So now, why the city of Des Moines? You seem like you're very qualified to be a judge in any city. Why Des Moines? Uh, well, Des Moines, number one, gave me the opportunity, and it has been uh, great to work collaboratively with people who support those efforts uh, that I've tried to engage in to improve the justice system. So there's a lot of collaboration, because obviously a court doesn't govern its own budget. We have to rely on the city council, and they, in turn, have to trust that we know exactly what they're doing. I've been very fortunate to work collaboratively with the leaders in the city. I, I'm not done yet, that's what I keep saying. There's still a vision that I have uh, to improve our court, and I want to see that through uh, before I seek something else. Now, Des Moines is a very diverse city. Um, I know there's a lot of culture here in Des Moines, and it's growing. How have you adjusted the court to keep up with that growth? Well, I'm proud to say that we are the only court in the state of Washington that currently conducts Spanish language court hearings. We take on traffic infractions, which is uh, instance, instances where it's only one person telling the judge exactly what happened. And I am fortunate to be bilingual enough to be able to conduct a hearing in a formal setting. So using that knowledge and that uh, capacity, I have uh, started just conducting the hearings in Spanish, which means that we save money in terms of interpretation. And the people get to explain their story directly to the judge um, and knowing that the judge understands exactly what they're saying. Likewise, I'm able to communicate what my expectations are to the defendants. Mm -hmm. So that's one way we've uh, enabled language access directly to the court. Um, obviously, for anyone who does not speak the language, we would provide an interpreter. But ultimately, the interpreter's job is to ensure that the person has access to the court. If the court is able to grant that access directly, I think it's a, a great thing for everybody involved. And how has, um, since you've been the judge here for Des Moines, how has, you know, the uh, crime, I guess you could say, or has it improved? I know you do, like, you do infractions, minor infractions and, and so forth, but has that, has you being on the, on the bench, has that improved the community in any way as far as um, crimes and so forth? Well, I think it Im improves the community, not necessarily in terms of impacting directly the, the criminal rate. I mm -hmm. think uh, that's probably a job best, or a question best left to the police chief who probably knows about that. I can tell you that we do uh, address issues differently. Mm -hmm. We um, address, for example, mental health issues 
Uh, we try to work collaboratively with the service providers here within uh, King County as well as within the city to provide mental health court services. We try to be creative in terms of how we sentence people, ensuring that if people are in custody or in jail that they are sentenced there for crimes that they've committed, not that they're waiting for the court uh, to see them administratively or that they're dealing with other issues that perhaps uh, are better treated outside of a jail um, system. So we are very creative in that capacity. I can tell you that in 2007, our average daily jail population was 17 people per day. Um, it is now seven. So the practices that we've put in place, whether they are alternatives to jail or other mental health court services or other specialty court uh, practices, I think is working. Do you think that has a, a, a relationship with the fact that you also got into the community? I hear that you know you, you attend the farmer's market here in Des Moines. I also hear that you're very active in the city of Des Moines. Do you think that that has some type of impact? Um, well, you know, the people that I usually see in Rotary are not the people that typically <laughs> appear before me. But I can say that it, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about this community is how welcoming it has been. Uh, five years ago, before this was ever even made a, an elected position, I joined our local Rotary. As part of the Rotary, I've chaired the Brews and Blues Festival, which is one of our uh, major fundraisers, or has become a major fundraiser in the last four years. I've also been a volunteer coordinator for our wine festival, which is also a major fundraiser. And through Rotary, we do a lot of work with uh, education, providing dictionaries for students. We do a lot of uh, community work, and we do international work as well. So being a member of Rotary and working with the, the local community uh, people on these issues has had a tremendous impact on me personally, and it helps me find a balance. Uh, unfortunately, when you're working in a court, you're dealing with people in crisis constantly, mm -hmm. and a lot of times the amount of people that you see could make somebody perhaps lose a little bit of faith in humanity. I find that having the rotary kind of counteracts those effects, because here you see a group of people who are really trying to make a difference and trying to impact the world through the giving of their time and of themselves. And I appreciate that, so I try to, to help out in my own way. Very well said, Judge Galvan. Do you have any last parting words for our viewers as they go to uh, submit their votes on Tuesday, November 5th? What I would say to our viewers is that be careful and look closely at who you vote for. Find someone who has uh, the experience, who shares your common values. Your voice is your vote. It is something that is priceless, and you should not give it away just because you see somebody's name or a slogan. You should really take the time to investigate and to research it. Uh, we are in an incredible age right now where you can find out so many things about individuals, not just the things that they tell you, but things that others may have said. Uh, Google is a great place to start. I always tell people you can tell a lot about a person by just doing some simple searches. And I hope that on November 5th, for those who live in Des Moines, or if you know somebody who lives in Des Moines, that you will consider retaining me to be the judge. I explained to it, the citizens that I talked to, I haven't asked anybody to give me their vote. I'm hoping that they will look at the record of achievement that I've had here during the last six years, and I hope they will consider whether or not I've earned it. Thank you very much for your time, Judge Gavon, and good luck in the re-election. I'm sorry, much. the reinstatement, I should say. <laughs> All right, thank you. And I'm Linda Lowry with Seattle Panoy.